Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode two for the fall 2022 <laughs> semester at TCC of the first draft. My name is Rubia Molai. I am your host, and I am co-hosting today with... My name is Ola Mokhtar. I'm a campus editor, and... This is Hope Smith. I'm also a campus editor. Thank you guys so much for being here with me again today. I had so much fun with you guys last time. And I would like to point out, yes, last time I did continuously say that this was the spring semester. <laughs> it is not. We are in the fall semester. I have made that mistake so many times this semester. I don't know why. But I'm so glad we're back. It's a new week. We can start fresh. How was y'all's weekend? Um, my weekend was very lazy, so <laughs> I accidentally completed an entire season of Grey's Anatomy. Mm. I, sh- I should not have How done that. How did you have the time to do that? It's so interesting. It's just, <laughs> I, just I, I don't, it's literally about doctors and their love lives, but I'm eating it up, so, yeah. Ola's gonna be a surgeon now. Yeah. She's gonna quit on us. There she goes. <laughs> how, how was your weekend? Um. Gosh, I worked, you know? I was just working. I was making money. Um, get that yeah, bag, girlfriend. I just have to, you know? Yeah. <laughs> to the bone. I just gotta get it. All right, well, my weekend was pretty interesting. My brother ended up getting engaged, Ooh. which is great. Super happy for him. I had a bunch of family coming down from um, different parts of the state and out of the country, which was insane. I actually have a cousin who is originally from Pakistan, and he ended up moving um, to New York for college. Mm-hmm. And so he came down for the engagement which was super fun it was really nice congratulations thank you which can we real fast touch on how interesting that is when people move so far away for like Mm -hmm. school or work yeah it's really weird like i remember this girl in my class and she was super smart so i knew she was going to some ivy league or something Mm -hmm. but she ended up going to mit and i'm like you're going where I wow. like it's just it's so crazy that the same people you grew up with or the same people that you know you went to high school with it's just they just like leave yeah. and I'm like how do you Whoa. what yeah. okay but it, it's really intriguing and interesting but I it's almost like I'm jealous because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I wanted to go out of state mm-hmm. I wanted to leave home right. I mean I'm sure people get homesick or, and whatnot but yeah I don't know it's it's really a different experience when you're out on your own and when you're in your hometown and you look at these Instagram posts these TikTok posts and you're like oh <laughs> You're Good out for there. You. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you're living my dream. Yeah. Double, double click. But I think <laughs> it's, it's also interesting how it's kind of the norm now where people kind of expect everybody to leave. Like once okay. you turn 18, everyone's like, yeah, you're going to move out. You're going to go somewhere else for college. But I'm noticing that for a lot of people, that's not really the reality. Yeah. A lot of people tend to stay either in state or, you know, stay at a community college for a little while or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But as much as we talk about, like, the good parts of moving away, like, you know, having that freedom and, you know, you say, like, looking at those Instagram posts and, like, all that fun, there's so many different issues and, like, troubles that can come with moving out of state or even out of city. Like, I have... I have a couple friends who decided to move to Denton for college. And some of the issues that they went through, I can't imagine going through that without having family close by or, you know, having to drive like an hour and a half, two hours to come see your family whenever you're going through something. Like the issues can be really intense too. Like, you know, you're it's your first time really leaving the nest and you're so young. I mean, 18, we we talk about 18 like you're an adult and you got this and like you need to have your whole life figured out. But 18 is so young. Like even being 20 years old, when I think back about being 18, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I would not have been ready yeah. to go. Even now, I don't think so. I would be ready to go move out to a completely different state. Yeah. Hope you're 18, right? Yeah, currently 18, (laughs) and I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And just like uh, Rabia said, like, there's this, like, misconception where it's like, okay, you're 18, now go and do all of these things. And it's like, I turned 18, and the next day, I had no idea what my next steps were. You know, I've been figuring things out. Thankfully, Mm -hmm. I've got family in my life who are there to help out and um, give me advice when they can, but, like applying for college by myself and everything it was 
I, I, it was completely new to me, you know? Mm-hmm. It was just all learning, you know? Even, I feel like, choosing a major. Oh, yeah. Like, putting that much pressure on an 18-year-old that, like, you need to choose exactly what it is that you want to do. Like, mm-hmm. I remember when I was first going into college, people being like, oh, don't worry about it. You have two years to finish your basics before you have to decide what your major is. Two years are over, y'all. Mm-hmm. The two years went by like that. And now applying to a four-year university, trying to figure out exactly what your major is going to be. And, like, everybody's coming up to you and asking, you know, what are you going to do in your life? Like, what is it going to be? Like, it's so much pressure. And I feel like if you were out of state, that would be so much more intense because then it's it's like a jury of your peers. It's not even, like, people that you know very well. It's these people that you just kind of were lumped into a sack with, kind of like in high school. Like, you know, you're, like, friends by proximity rather than like by choice yeah. and now you're paying out-of-state tuition for that so exactly like, wrong move you are out of thousands oh you know? yeah no i i have so many people that i know who decided to go out of state and like at the end of it they're like man it was not worth it mm-hmm. with those student loans like i feel like the student loan crisis is already so insane right now like mm-hmm. people owe hundreds of thousands of dollars and like there are these kids like you said like 18 year old kids signing up for these loans not being able to understand exactly what these contracts are saying like basically signing their lives away Mm -hmm. and then like you turn 22 23 when you graduate and you're like holy crap like what am I supposed to do with all this and then you have all of this loans excuse me all of these loans hanging above your head as you're entering your new life like that has to be so stressful I can't, I can't even imagine. Like, I'm here, and I'm imagining the girl from MIT, like, filling out all this paperwork, because mm-hmm. you're not, I mean, you, you don't live near MIT. Mm-hmm. You live in Texas, so there's that, and then there's the tuition. Um, I mean, of course, there's scholarships, but, you know, not everyone gets them. Yeah. And yeah. there's FAFSA, but, again, not everyone gets the amount that they need, so it's, it's very intimidating. Yeah. I remember whenever I first started, I was like, What's my TCC track? Yeah. Uh, what? Because what's a subsidized and unsubsidized? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know like, what that is. Bro, FAFSA, FAFSA killed me. Killed me. Like the paperwork. First of all, my dad just my dad just didn't want to do it. My dad was like, "There, no, like you're not, you're not gonna get a grant or a loan anyways. Like, just just leave it alone. Don't do it. But you have to. Like, it's a necessity to fill out FAFSA for all these colleges." And so sitting down, getting all that information from my dad, and then inevitably just being told that, no, you don't get anything anyways. Yeah. It's like, I already knew this. Why Why are you, why are you telling me, like, why are you making me go through all of this pain just to tell me something I already knew? Yeah, like, you know? rub it in my face. You know? Exactly. Like, there was no need for that. Yeah. Absolutely no need for that. No, fast was a pain in the butt, you know? Yeah. It's all... You asked your dad. I just did it and then made him enter in the numbers because, like, like I do it and then and then I let him do like the rest of the things that I Bro, do. Bro, I had to. I knew. No- I was like, I don't know how much our income is. Yeah. I don't know what my social security number is. I don't know what any. I didn't have to memorize my social security number oh, while yeah. doing college applications. Yeah. <laughs> so now I know it. But at the time, I was just like, Dad, what's my social security number? Uh, what's my birthday? Uh, what What are all these things? Yeah. I feel like sometimes your parents, like, you kind of just think of them as, like, filing folders. Yeah. Like, you hold all the excess information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, my parents have, like, it's, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, it's very organized. A bin. Yeah, mm-hmm. and... <laughs> Every Maybe. child has like a Oh my god, <laughs> my thing. parents have that too. Yeah. Is this just like a this like a universal. collective experience? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. my parents have that too. They're just like put it in your folder. I'm like, okay, okay. my folder. But my mom keeps everything. Oh, and yeah. I mean every like I could rip off the corner of a piece of paper, draw hard on it, give it to my mom. She'll turn it around, put my name on it, put the date that I gave it to her, and then put it in a folder. (laughs) And I'm like, sis, like like, this is a little excessive. I mean, it's so, so sweet. Oh yeah, It's like the sweetest thing on the face of the planet and I love her for it. But that is, that is a lot. (laughs) That is a lot. Literally, like every little thing. Yeah. Like I get the, 
the stuff like your birth certificate and your social security card and your passport and you know all those important things. I have old assignments. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, my mom. My ago. mom has old assignments. Mm-hmm. Although I will say, certain important stuff. Have you noticed certain important stuff gets looked over? Mm-hmm. Like my social security card for twenty years had my name spelled wrong on it. No. Oh my God. <laughs> but here's the thing it was never an issue up until i tried to apply for the collegian like oh. i got into school <laughs> oh no. i got into college <laughs> i had jobs like never been an issue and yeah. then i tried to apply for the collegian they were like ma'am your name is spelled wrong it's not adding up and my parents were just like eh, it wasn't an issue until now and i was like well now it's an issue yeah <laughs> like, that's the issue. problem you know? right, but right. can you imagine having to deal with that on your own if you weren't like oh. if I was like sitting in Chicago or something just like mm-hmm. my social security card yeah, like, who is wrong who do I talk to you about to, this I remember I had to like change the spelling of my name and they did it when I was younger but they didn't change it on the card oh. so oh. I had to go to a this, it's a, a government center I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know it's something but mm-hmm. you have to go there and you have to wait for hours and then, like it's all of this and then you're just dropping it on an 18-year-old. Like, oh. okay. I feel like turning 18 is this, like, everybody hypes it up so much. Mm-hmm. They're like, you know, when you turn 18, you're going to be an adult, and you can do whatever you want. First of all, that differs from household to household, okay? Oh, yep. Like, if I walked up to my mom and dad and was like, I'm 18, I can do whatever oh, I no. want, my dad would be like, Here's your car insurance bill. Here's your phone bill. Yeah, here's yep. here's how much you need to pay in groceries. This is your t- like. My dad would be like, "Get out of my house! Like mm-hmm. this is this. You want to be an adult? Go ahead, be an adult. Like yeah. no. Like I still have a curfew, you know. And it's just like basic oh, yeah. house respect. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm okay with it. Honestly, like I'm, I'm, okay I'm straight chilling. Like yeah. honestly, with certain things, like when you don't want to go out somewhere and you you like, can just be like, "Oh, my mom said no." Yeah, sorry. Like curfew. being exactly yeah. being able to still have that excuse is low key nice. You're just yeah. like, "Oh, sorry, sorry yeah. I can't. I just can't." I really wish I could, but I just can't. just like I think yeah. I've got to do at home. I mean, you know? obviously, like there are pros and cons to every situation. I'm yeah. sure, like, living out of state, like, that freedom of being able to kind of live your own way and not having to really worry about anyone else, I'm sure is really nice. Like, I'm sure that's a big part of why a lot of kids go is because, like, I I can imagine that aspect of it being great, like, coming and going as you please, not really having to worry about checking in with somebody or, you know. Because yeah. that, that also, I feel like, is a mutual respect thing. Like, me coming and going in and out of my house, I, I want to let my parents know kind of what's going on and stuff, so they're not worried about me. Right. But I can imagine how that would be really nice where I just wouldn't have to remember to do that and being able to kind of just run according to your own schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that being a plus point. There are obviously lots of plus points to living on your own, being young without as much responsibility as I guess you would have yeah. once you have a job and you've graduated and all of that good fun jazz. Like, mm-hmm. that definitely sounds nice. Yeah, and I think people who also go out of state and, like, have never left their state before, like, born and raised, just, mm-hmm. like, didn't leave Texas, um, I think it's a good skill to have, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, okay, now I've left and I'm developing these skills outside of a different state, you know? Like, it's adaptability and... Um, Making new friends, you know? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Especially, I feel like, growing up in a, in a state like Texas. Oh, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> like, when you when you <laughs> live in Texas, yeah. bro, you think the whole world is Texas. Which, I mean, how can you not? Massive. It's massive. Yes. Like, I know some people who, like, I would meet at, like, conferences and stuff who are like, yeah, I can drive, like, two hours and be in a different state. And I'm like, bro, I could drive 18 straight hours mm-hmm. and be in the same state. Yeah. Yep. You just, like, you know, there's, like, aren't there, like, different time zones in Texas? Oh, my God. Yeah, there are. There are. El Paso is on mountain time. Wow. (laughs) That's just Texas. (laughs) (laughs) Like, oh, my God. And then... And then you kind of just, like, one day you wake up and you realize how ginormous we are. Mm -hmm. Like, apparently we're the only state that has, like, state edition cars. I've heard this. I could be wrong. Yeah. But, like, you know how, like, Chevy will make, like the texas version of a truck i didn't know that i didn't know that oh my god that's a thing that's a thing that's a thing apparently other states don't have that and apparently (sighs) other states don't have state gift shops in each of their Uh, malls 
Like, you know how there's that Texas gift shop in every mall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apparently, there isn't, like, a Michigan gift shop in, a, in every oh Michigan mall. Oh, I lived in Michigan. I don't think... Mm, I don't think I ever saw, like, a Michigan gift shop. Like, we are so self-absorbed. I, well, I mean, we're, like, number two um, as it pertains to, like, mm-hmm. population. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean there's who's a lot num- of people. Who's number one? Alaska? Cali. Cali. Oh, yeah. California. Yeah. Okay. I, I said Alaska. <laughs> I'm thinking about, like, landmass. I'm like, yeah. Alaska's pretty huge, so. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Oh, my God. I lived in both those states. Really? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> See, I've I've had the, um, excuse me, I've had the privilege of being able to travel a lot in and out of state. Yeah. Or, excuse me, like, in and out of the country like growing up so i'm thankful that i had that experience being able to meet other people and like seeing what else is out there but for people like you said who grew up only in one place i can imagine that cabin fever like being like oh my god get me out of here that's me i want to (laughs) leave i love i I do love texas like there's some things (laughs) that i'm like you know what you can leave (laughs) (laughs) but um no, I love Texas, but like I wish I would like you know go stretch my fingers. Yeah. Why my not my fingers? My wings. <laughs> my, I would like to stretch my fingers, <laughs> ladies my fingers. and gentlemen. My wings, like a little further. Like yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's really nice. Like I recently um, traveled alone. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Loved it. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Canada. I, oh, oh, oh that's gosh. amazing. I fell in love. Yeah. It, it's really nice, especially oh, when yeah. you're alone. And Traveling you're alone. by yourself is the best. Mm-hmm. I recently took my first solo trip. I went to New Mexico. And, mm-hmm. like, even though I was going to visit family, like, that whole prospect of, like, being alone in the airport and, like, yeah. getting to, like, do what I wanted and, like, traveling on my own time. Like, oh, my God. Yes, I have bad. That was so nice. Yeah. That was so, like, honestly... I feel like I would be chilling living on my own if I was in the same state. Mm -hmm. Like, if I could be, like, close enough where if I really needed something or, like, if my parents really needed something, I could be there. Yeah. I I would do it. Yeah, no. I want to (laughs) leave. I was like, I want to get as far as I can. You know what? I'd visit. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I've had a two year on stage. <laughs> you know, if you if you could go anywhere, Ola, where would you go? It doesn't really. It really just depends on my surroundings. Like, it doesn't even have to be a certain country. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to sec- go out of the country? Uh, yeah, anywhere. Just secluded. Ola said Texas isn't enough. I mean, <laughs> she's like, seclusion. I need yeah. to get out of the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> really? seclusion is. Yeah. Is where I want to be. If I had to move somewhere out of state, like in the U.S. still, I think I would probably go probably maybe to Colorado. I visited Colorado, and I really, really loved it. I thought it was so nice. So either Colorado or maybe like maybe another southern state. I feel like living in the south, you kind of have you get used to that like southern hospitality and like certain things like that. But I think also you have to be really specific when you say the south Mm -hmm. because... If you yeah. go to some, like, podunk town in the middle of nowhere and mm-hmm. the sun goes down and they're just like, mm-hmm. oops, yeah. like, be like, I was just like, can I go home, please? Yeah. But, yeah, no, I feel like maybe, like, Colorado would be a good choice. Yeah. I like that. And if I had to go out of the country, New Zealand. A hundred percent New Zealand. <laughs> I want to move to New Zealand so bad because I love their prime minister, Jacinda mm-hmm. Arden, that woman is amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. Honestly, God. Alaska, because I don't really think it has a lot of people. Oh, I don't think Ola, so. <laughs> do you think you'd be able to handle that cold? I'd be inside most of the time. Yeah. Oh, you just. Ola would be chilling. Oh, Ola just wants to be like in her. Ha- Ola's a hermit crab. She just yeah, wants to be right. in her house alone. Ola's a homebody. I'd be inside, literally, just from yeah. a fireplace, and I just love that like ambiance. It's really pretty. And then yeah. out of state, if I really had to choose, maybe. Oh no, not Australia. Never mind. <laughs> I can't do spiders. Bro, that's that's my one thing about Australia. I feel like God put all of the scariest creatures on the face of the planet in Australia. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Drawbacks. But maybe maybe Ireland. I heard they were really nice. I don't know. Ireland's pretty. Yeah. What about you? Mm, In-state New York. 
Mm. Yeah. You mean or in country? Of, in country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, New I York New is York. in Texas, guys, in case you didn't know. Yeah, I'm New just York City, expanding Texas. the borders for Texas. You know? <laughs> New York City, comma, yeah. Texas. <laughs> New York City, Texas. Yeah. You know, there, there is a Paris, Texas. There is. Yeah. There's a Palestine, right? There's, a, there's also, I think... There's a bunch of different cities that are named after other countries mm-hmm. yeah. and and yeah. other cities and, like, other places, so. Yeah. Texas is just big enough for it. Oh, know? yeah. And I think out of country, Spain, Barcelona. In a heartbeat, I oh, would Oh, that mm-hmm. would be fun. Mm-hmm. I really, really would love to spend some time in Italy. I feel like the Italians are really chill. Yeah. yeah like, like, they, Italians, like, kind of just let people do their thing. Mm-hmm. Also, that food, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, like. Bro. I know there's like different streets as well that are named after. Yeah. Uh huh. Like I know there's a there's, there's a one. Hawaii like there's a street called Hawaii in <laughs> um in Grand Prairie. Yeah. Hawaii in Texas. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And then there's one after a person. I think it was uh Kashugi. I think. Mm. I think he was the um he's from Saudi Arabia. Oh wow. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, he uh, passed away, so I think oh, it was, like, a memorial interesting. Thing, So Yeah. But going back a little bit, like, how you were talking about, like, if you were to move, all you'd want to do is sit in your house. Mm-hmm. I feel like our parents, when you talk about, like, wanting to move out or, like, wanting to move out of state for college or whatever, their idea of what we want to do is so different from the reality of it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you want to do drugs yeah they're like you want to <laughs> like you want to party and do drugs yeah. and do all these horrible th- and we're like no i kind of just want to sit in my living room and watch an r-rated movie without you around yeah like you know 100 miles <laughs> 100 miles is really a good distance yeah yeah i think like now n- even i'm kind of like i i know i'm young <laughs> i like realistically i understand i'm 20 years old and i'm really young but I feel like I'm not interested, or mo- even most of the people that I meet in my age group are no longer interested in that sort of, like, party lifestyle that we kind of grew up hearing about that all college yeah. students are into. Like, low-key, m- I don't really know anybody who's a part of that scene or who wants... I mean, more power to you if you do. Obviously, it's there for a reason. You know, everybody has the right to partake in whatever they would like. Right. But I think it differs from person to person. I feel like it's hard for our parents to understand that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that can go back to the experiences they had when they were younger or, like, the way that their mind worked. And they're just like, oh, if I wanted to do this, then that's probably exactly what you want to go do. And we're like, no. They're guilty as charged. They they, they (laughs) wanted to do something we didn't even think of doing. Oh, yeah. No, my my parents like to call their... um, like, their young days, whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. they call it their time of jahilia. And for, <laughs> so jahilia basically means, like, craziness. Oh. Yeah, so they, anytime we talk about something that my parents did with it, or more so my dad, my mom didn't do anything. Mm. Honestly, the like, the craziest thing my mom ever did was, like, egg somebody's car. And oh. I was like, wow, mom, you're such a rebel. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> but, yeah, no, anytime we talk about some, like, funny, crazy thing that my dad did when he's young, he or when he was young, they'll always just be like, oh, it was, like, my time of jahilia. So this one time I got really annoyed. I was like, when do I get my time of jahilia, dad? Yeah. When do I get to let loose and go cray-cray? And he was like, never. You, like, I, he's like, I learned from my mistakes so you wouldn't have to make them. And I'm mm. like, that's not how this works. That's very interesting, yeah. Dad. That's very <laughs> exactly. Interesting. It's like, bro, why, why, why mm. do you, wh- the double standard. Mm. It's going to happen either way. Like, if you shelter your, your children to the point where they just, the, now they're just even more intrigued. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say my parents kept a really good balance. Like, mm. I never felt the need to go and, like, break my parents' rules, yeah. honestly. Like, because if I had questions or if I was interested or, like, intrigued by something, I could just go ask them about it. But I know people who just, like, blew up at their kids for every little thing and oh, just yeah. were so, so uber strict that their kids lost their crap when they got out. Mm. Like, there, there needs to be moderation, especially, like, if you come from, like, a religious family like learning the moderation of balancing religion and 
I guess, like, worldly values, you could say, Mm -hmm. is so important. Or even, like, I mean, we're in the South. Like, we, in Texas, like, the sort of, like, intense Christian values, too, can be a thing that I know impose a lot of pressure on kids nowadays, whether it be, like, purity culture or, like, just, like, the drinking culture or whatever it may be. It's so hard to learn where you fit into that when you're growing up, you know? Mm Yeah, and I can imagine, like, college kids, like, that moved away, not yeah. necessarily, like, out of state, but they moved away, and mm-hmm. they're not really interested in doing, yeah. you know, all, mm-hmm. all that stuff. They're more like, like me, like a hermit crab, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it really just depends on the person. Yeah. Um, I think that it's just, you know, the person the person likes what they like, and they don't like what they don't like. And it's it's really interesting that you know I've heard some people are like, well, if I don't do this, they're gonna they're gonna say something about me. And like, child, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I feel like peer pressure is definitely a problem. Like it's for sure an issue. Absolutely, nobody's denying that. Yeah. But I think it's less of an issue as you get older or at least it should be i know that there's a lot of college age kids who deal with the who deal with peer pressure and who do things that they're not 100 percent comfortable with i would say that sort of thing needs to be on parents as well like you should growing up you should give your kid the confidence and you know the reassurance that you should be able to make your own decisions and i'm going to back you up so you should back yourself up Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of that does go back to the way that your childhood shapes you and how your parents or how whoever raised you basically responded to when you didn't want to do something or when you were trying to make a decision. Because mm-hmm. if you're not learning that from a young age, it's hard to figure it out as an adult. Yeah. And if you're out of state, you exactly. don't have that there, like right there for you. Yeah. You, know? you, you go out and it's just like, boom. Absolutely. No, I mean... I remember talking to some of my brothers. My brothers are a good chunk older than me. My, my, my oldest brother is six years older than me. Mm-hmm. So he graduated high school, um, or excuse me, he graduated college, I believe right as I was going into college, right. I think so, or right as I was ending high school, one of the two. So talking to him about his experiences, he stayed at home, but a couple of his friends ended up going um, to not out-of-state colleges, but like, you know, like they moved – to different cities farther away and so talking to him and like hearing about those experiences where he was like yeah like there was a good chunk of my friends who got roped into doing things that they weren't interested in or that they were uncomfortable with or they didn't want to do because of other people like that in and of itself is so upsetting Mm -hmm. you know because college is supposed to be about exploring yourself and you know what your opinion is or what you want to do Somebody else coming in and taking that away from you is just beyond ridiculous and sad. Yeah, like, like, like you know, stuff's going to happen, you know. And I, I hear a lot of stories about people um, who, who are out of state and in state, you know, just dealing with that um, peer pressure thing and wanting to immerse themselves in these things. And sometimes it goes far. I have people who are older than me um, who tell me, their experience in college and like yeah like I I did some things I shouldn't have done Mm -hmm. I was with the wrong group of people you know and these people are I think juniors seniors in college now but it is sad hearing that you know yeah of course no and then like could you imagine being 18 like I can't imagine myself being in that situation Mm -hmm. being like hours away from home and just being peer pressured into doing something like yeah. me at 18 could not handle oh that. yeah no me at no. 18 too for sure would have been scared mm-hmm. i would have been scared out of my mind like when you're 18 you're already in such a vulnerable place of my whole environment is changing for a lot of people the the students or the friends that they've been around are the only people they've been around for the past like 16 years of their life whatever so That whole change of, like, everybody I know is moving away. Now I got to jump into this college and see what's going to be there, what my class is, like, having to build a schedule. Like, there's so many firsts happening when you're 18 years Mm -hmm. old. And so I think on top of that, like, somebody 
pressuring you into doing things that you don't want to do, like, that has to be insanely scary, and especially yeah. not being able to have any support system around you. Mm-hmm. It's it's not as easy as people make it sound. Like, when they're like, oh, just say no, just, you know, don't do it, just take yourself out of that situation. That's not how it works. Yeah. It's not that simple. Like, sure, it sounds simple when you're trying to give someone advice, but what are you going to do when they're alone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are they going to do when the when everybody around them is doing something yeah. and they suddenly feel, like, out of place? Exactly. And then exactly. all of these... That feeling, too. Especially whenever, like, if you didn't grow up with parents that gave you the confidence to get yourself out of something like that, you, you, you would probably fall into it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just the reality, like... Yeah. And being 18, and... You know, it seems really appealing when you're not out and doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you never know what they're feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what that girl in MIT is doing. I don't know how she's feeling. Yeah. Um. So it's, it's different for everyone. Yeah. So. I think being able to, like, logistically look at the pros and cons of a situation and being able to be like, yeah, maybe it's better that I chose the safer option. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get so pressured into doing spontaneous things or adventurous things and taking risks, but we forget that every so often it's okay to choose the safe option. Yeah, It's okay to stay close to home for a little while because if 18-year-old Rubia decided to move out and go do things on her own, my life would be a lot different. Yeah. I probably would be in a really bad place. I probably would have done things that I would have severely regretted because when you're young and you're impressionable, mm-hmm. yeah, you make mistakes. And the more, you know, the more freedom you give somebody with the who doesn't have a large information pool to pull from, mm-hmm. yeah, they're going to make more mistakes, especially when you're only surrounded by your peers who have the same pool of knowledge that you do. Yeah. Yeah, usually, you know, you're in your major. I imagine you're, you know, around the same people. You have, you know, the same classes. But I just, I don't understand why it happens to begin with. I guess they're like, oh, my gosh, my parents aren't here. Nobody's here to judge me. Yeah. Like, I can do whatever, but... In it, the process, you, you're hurting someone else. It's that thought of, I, I think, for especially for those kids who have really, really, really strict parents, it's more of that, oh, my God, I don't have rules right now. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, this is the only chance I have to go do what I want. So it's more of that, before this time runs out, before those restrictions are back, let me do every single thing that I can, yeah. which is such a dangerous mindset to have mm-hmm. for an 18, 19 year old who kind of has all of the worst things in the world at at their fingertips. Right there. It yeah. is like right there. Especially yeah. if you're in a major city. Like mm-hmm. I can understand like like people in college station, like they're mm-hmm. there's not much to do yeah. out there. Like I'm sure they have their own like wicked ways over there. Their own network. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure yeah. they do. But yeah. like say you're in a city like Austin or say you're in like New York or yeah. Los Angeles, like there's a lot of good stuff there. But if you're 18, 19 years old and it's your first time out and you want to go do all the crazy shit that you can find, oh, there's a lot of bad that can yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, I want to do X and oh, I want to do Y. If it's like in the... In, in, like, a box of reason according to you, it's mm-hmm. fine. But you can make sense of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, That's my thing. Hey, yeah. go, go, go you. Mm-hmm. But it's it's almost like they want to make sure that somebody else is with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a maybe. Like a group word? thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, it wasn't just me. It was X, Y, and exactly. Z. Exactly. But you well, know. Who, well, who started it? You yeah. know what? I will I will say there there's definitely nothing wrong with wanting to explore and wanting right. to figure right. out how you feel about certain things. And I feel like you have to say that. I know that there's going to be a lot of people who disagree with me on this that like you know, there are things that are bad for you. Right. Absolutely. There are things that you probably shouldn't partake in. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you if you really want to do it, if you can sit down and logically be like this is something that I really want to do, I want to experience it at least once in my life, then, yeah, you should do it. I mean, like, for example, 
I recently went to a Harry Styles concert, okay? Mm-hmm. My parents are not fond of concerts. They were not happy that I was doing this at first. They they were pretty against it to at the beginning. Mm-hmm. They ended up giving me their blessing. I decided to go, and I got pit tickets for this concert, not really understanding what that meant, what that process looked like. It was like a three-day-long process. Now, on the other side of it, would I do pit tickets ever again? No, it's not an experience that I particularly enjoyed. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like it wasn't that super worth it. However, if I had not had the experience, if I didn't do it, Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have come to that conclusion and I wouldn't have the, you know, I wouldn't have this feeling of, hey, I did it, so now I know. Yeah. Like, that, that is also just as important. Like, your parents just telling you no, like, I just don't think this is right for you, sometimes that's just not enough. Yeah. And your parents' experiences are important, you know? Like, Absolutely. Like, their advice that they give you is important, but it's never gonna be that feeling of knowing it you know because you can hear it and be like okay i know to avoid that but sometimes yeah there are things it's like i have to know this you know? yeah i think that's one of the main differences between like a couple generations before us versus now whereas i think back then they kind of were okay with just being like all right somebody else is telling me that this experience isn't good somebody else is telling me that they've been through it so maybe that's just enough for me mm-hmm. But I think nowadays we are kind of just really used to having the experience for ourselves or wanting to do it ourselves. Like that why is really important for us. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You that know? why is very that important. That why is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember I have this friend and she said that she's she's the youngest and she um her her parents were like, Listen, you have all of these siblings that did mistakes. Mm-hmm. You better not go into that same hole. Mm. She's she's more intrigued to do it yeah. now. Exactly. Like when you phrase it like that, like oh, what's there? Mm-hmm. I want to do it now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it it, it is a real problem the peer pressure thing. Mm-hmm. But if you don't allow your your kid to go and do what they need to do yeah. in order to experience life, yeah, it's just gonna backfire and. One is going to think that the other is wrong and that it's just going to be this whole thing, but it could be avoidable if you let them experience it because yeah. you're just stunting them if not. Yeah, it's yeah. that gut feeling too. Like, you can go and do something and you'll feel like, okay, this is not a good move, you know, mm-hmm. or this is bad. Yeah. You know. I think that just comes down to being able to have an open and honest relationship with your child and being like, you know what, I understand that you're going to do things that I don't like. I understand that I'm not going to agree with every decision you make, but at the end of the day, I'm here for you when you need it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I totally get it. Like, I don't have a child. I don't know what it's like. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I get some people, you know, that are like, oh, my God, my child is out in the world with all these bad people, and oh, my God, what's going to happen? Like, I totally get it, but there comes a point where they're almost too, I don't want to say too grown, but you have to let a little bit of them go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of that I would say, like, you know, we can say as much as we want, oh, I know where my parents are coming from, I know, you know, that they're worried about me, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to understand until we become parents. And I feel like parents say that a lot, but there's another side of that. Mm -hmm. The other side is we're not supposed to understand yet. Yeah. The job of a parent is to worry and to be concerned and to, you know, nurture and love. But the job of a child is to explore and make mistakes and come to the conclusions of situations And to take, like I said before in, like, the last podcast, take safe, calculated risks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is so important to take risks in life because if not, you will be stuck in the same place forever. And that resentment that can build on, like, over time, especially for the people who are trying to protect you, is not healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not at all. Like, I remember... (laughs) I used to read, I, I still read, but I used to read Harry Potter books. And, you know, I have immigrant African parents. <laughs> 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 Harry Potter, 
Um, it's not the move. It's not. It's not a sleigh. No, don't do that. <laughs> I, oh, you can't yeah. read Harry Potter. Yeah. Um. I mean, I did anyways. I downloaded it on my oh. on my <laughs> tablet. Like that's such a classic representation of what like constraining your child so much could do. Mm-hmm. Like it's just a book, sure. But to them, it was. Oh my God! Is she How really? How dare you? Wow. Wizards. Our ancestors are rolling in their graves. (laughs) Like, how dare you disgrace this family? Like, I mean, I was nine, so I could just Mm -hmm. download it. But, I mean, it's just, it's not the go-to move, Mm -hmm. so. I think all of these things, like, whether it be something as small as a Harry Potter book or something as big as moving out of your house... It, it's all something that takes time and it's growing pains and it's going to be uncomfortable. And if there is any lesson in my life that I've learned that I wish I could tell my younger self is you have to learn to live with discomfort. Mm-hmm. If you can live with that growing pain and if you can push through it, then there's nothing that you can't conquer on the other side of it. And that goes for kids and parents both. So, you know, I think that's a decision that needs to be made personally and it varies from person to person when the right time is to let go and to spread your wings and to fly. Or fingers. Or or (laughs) spread your fingers. (laughs) But, you know, hopefully one day we will all be able to get to that place at the right time and not rush it. That's the biggest thing. Everybody is on their own journey, and that timeline looks different for everyone, and that's the most important thing to remember when you're young, I would say. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, well... I think that's going to be it for us today. I hope you all enjoyed listening to episode two for the fall semester of the First Draft podcast. Thank you so much, Hope and Ola, for being here with me today. I'm so glad you guys are joining me this semester on the podcast. And I hope you all listening at home have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.